What's up fellow Sambarians? So I've been seeing this come up quite a few times um, in groups and I just kind of wanted to make a video today um, just to kind of make people aware of the situation. And so maybe you don't make the same mistake um, in the future. So right now I'm getting um, new tires put on Goober Chan, my green uh, 97 Sambar Diaz. And I figure, hey, I got the wheels off. Let's do rotors. So I do have a video um, I made a few months ago on replacing the pads only because I did not have rotors at the time. And these rotors aren't too bad. But um, I figure since I have them exposed and this is becoming a situation, um, I might as well make a video and show you guys a how to and how to um, be aware and not make the same um, mistake that is happening with other people. So I, I had bought a Japanese brand brake pads for my sandbar which I think I'm gonna start stocking these in the store because um, it's been a problem with the eBay brake pads that are most likely from China, which again, there's nothing wrong with the Chinese stuff. It's just usually out of spec by a little bit. And it, these things are so, you know, the tolerance on a lot of these parts is very slim to none. So when it's uh, something that doesn't quite fit, um, it's <laughs> very difficult uh, to make it work. For example, the struts. I made a video on the struts not fitting because I think a matter of, you know, a hair of metal and paint on the struts does not allow it to fit in the steering knuckle here. And you basically have to grind it down. And that was uh, something I knew was probably gonna happen, but I was just gonna make a video on how to overcome that situation um, if you wanted to go the eBay route. Um, but it's better just to go with parts from Japan. And like I said, I'll try to stock them. So if you're in need for brake pads, you don't have to wait two, three weeks for them to arrive, I already have them for you. So if you go on eBay and you're guilty of buying eBay parts, which I am too, um, you're gonna find these rotors for a pretty good price. I think they're like 50 bucks a rotor, which yes, if you price hunt, you will see that in Japan, rotors for the sandbar, um, you can get some other brand, I can't remember, Tokiko or something, I could be wrong. You could buy a set, both fronts for $50. Yes, you can. Or you can buy these for $50 a piece. So I think it's buy two, get 10% off, so it's like 90 bucks for the fronts. But yes, again, you could buy the whole set from Japan for 50 bucks. Normal, not drilled, not, um, these are vented. They're not slotted or drilled or anything. Um, you can get the fancy uh, drilled and slotted ones from Japan. And they are all vented. Um, I don't think they make solid rotors. And if they do, um, I would get vented ones. But anyways, um, you can, I think they're Tokikos. You can get them for 50 bucks, but shipping on a pair of rotors from Japan is like, um, I think it was like 150 or something like that. Rotors are really expensive to ship over here, so that's why it's cheaper just to buy the ones off of eBay. And so I went that route, but the brake pads on eBay are too fat. They will not fit um, with this, this rotor and the eBay brake pads. Um, I think you have to, you basically have to grind down the brake pads to get them to fit. But since I have the pit works from Japan in here, um, and they've probably got like a hundred kilometers on, if that, <sighs> chicken's going in my shed to probably lay an egg. Um, <clears throat> since they hardly have any wear on these brake pads, I'm just gonna scuff them up and reuse them with uh with new rotors so i figured hey i'll show you how to change your rotors and give you a little for foreshadowing or forewarning that the ebay brake pads are not going to fit and they're going to require some grinding just like 
the struts did <laughs> or the dampeners whatever you want to call them so yeah so i'm getting tires put on this thing right now 165 60 14s hopefully that's a good size for these lowered vans um so when that gets back i'll you know i'll point that out that that's a good tire to run and while we're exposed we're gonna do rotors so let's get to it okay so first you're gonna want to take your caliper off there are two 19 millimeter bolts on the other side so that's what we're gonna start with Pretty tight, pretty, pretty, pretty just tight. Right. Trying to do this so I don't bash my hand into anything. There we go. One nineteen mil. Another down at the bottom of the caliper. Yeah. Uh. Oh, that's very awkward. And since I am just doing the rotor, I'm not doing anything with the caliper. So if you wanted to see how to change the brake pads, uh, again, I do have another video. I'll put it, uh, maybe I'll do a link in it, link in the description or something for that video. But again, today, just rotors. And I did put uh, anti-seize on these when I put the whole thing back together because it, uh, it is sliding. Those are the, I can't remember what they're called, but the bolts that the caliper sits on with the sleeves. I didn't want it to uh, corrode and all that. Okay, so we got the back plate bolts, so it should just come off. But it might, there is a slight lip slight lip on the there we go there was a slight groove and lip on the old rotor so um, just had to push past that but these pads are uh, yeah pretty much brand new still so set these out of the way and while you uh if you are doing the pads it is a good time to clean those seals and the boots um i do sell uh an entire kit if they're pretty bad and ripped so you can just replace everything but like i said in my old video um i took all the boots off and cleaned and greased everything so now we have access to the rotor and we're gonna get this sucker off so we're gonna take a bolt, two little bolts. Uh, I can't remember what size they are. Um, I'll figure it out, but we'll get those in there. We'll thread them in the holes and that will cause the cal uh, rotor to push off the hub. Okay, so I got the little bolts. We'll thread into those two threaded holes here, which will then pry the uh, rotor off the back. I might need a bigger. Yeah, nope, actually that's working good. So we'll just go even on each side until it pops off. There we go. There is our old rotor see it's not not entirely too bad so the factory rotors actually call 
out a minimum thickness of 16 millimeters for when they need to be changed and my rotors had a thickness of about 19 18 to 19 millimeters so the rotors were just fine had plenty of meat on them but with if you take your rotors off and you check them with a gauge you don't want to be anything less than 16 millimeters there's this there's a small lip on it but you know what I got I've got the uh, you see that small lip it's not very these aren't dangerous way bad but I figured I have rotors might as well change them I will probably never do a brake job on this thing uh, in my lifetime as much as I drive these things so and it was a good uh, informational video for people who, who are buying the eBay ones and realizing they're not fitting which it's it's cool we don't know until we try it and like I said the struts dampeners they don't fit those require grinding and same with the brake pads so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my wire brush I'm going to clean up the hub here and make sure it's got a good surface before we put it back together wire brush make sure our surface is clean of rust and anything that will cause it to sit wonky we don't want that hi patitos and if you're super uh if you're super ocd now's a good time to get the um brake disc shield or rotor cover dish shield blah since the bolts are right there you can take that off clean it up and repaint it if if you're into that kind of stuff and unfortunately i'm out of brake fluid i mean uh, brake cleaner so i'm gonna have to use it sparingly here Repairs. Try not to touch them. Alright. Those fit. We'll put my uh, upcentric ring back on. That'll kind of hold the. That'll kind of hold the rotors in place as I put it back together. Ratchet hammer. Gotta love ratchet hammer. All right, brand new rotor. Looks really good. And we'll All she wrote. Bummer. Okay. So, got that. I'm gonna go get some uh, other parts cleaner real quick. Okay, so now that we got the rotor on, let's get our caliper back on after it's cleaned, of course. Of course, of course. Since they're newish pads, they should be real snug. And let's get so don't forget your shield. Your back plate, whatever that is. Now let's tighten that back up. Got it. 
Dari Dari Okay, that's tight. Shouldn't go anywhere. Alright, that's tight. Shouldn't go anywhere. Did that lock up? Yes, of course it locked up. Okay. Since they are brand new, since they are brand new rotors, and uh, if you're putting on new pads, you're going to want to break them in. So that means coming to uh, long, gradual stops. You don't want to stop too hard and too fast because you'll um, you can glaze them over and get your squealies. So I think that's uh, but so if you had the brake pads from eBay and the rotors, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't even be able to get them on nor turn them. But since I have the pit works from Japan. Um, everything is good so I'm not going to show the other side because it's the same process but the two 19 millimeter bolts on the back pulls your caliper off uh, you get your these are m8s I think it's like a coarse thread metric bolt I'm not sure it just said uh, it just said 8 by 12 millimeter I don't know what the thread pit it, thread pitch is but it's uh I think it's an m8 and it's like a coarser coarser thread pitch and uh, that was the correct bolt to get in there to get that to pop off but uh, yeah hopefully that was helpful guys thanks for watching um, stay away from those ebay pads all right see you on the next one <laughs>